Hey guys, how's it going? This is going to be my series on developing Alexa skills with Python 3.6. Um, just going to go over some basic stuff in this first video, how to interact between your Python and your Alexa skill, um, the JSON that's included in that, and how to set up the, all of that stuff. So first things first, you want to go to developer.amazon.com, sign in, create an account if you don't have one. Um, click on Alexa and then you're going to want to go to Alexa skills kit and start a skill. Alright, so I'm going to delete this because I've already taken multiple takes of this video. I forgot to record, I forgot to have my mic on, stuff like that. So this is going to be a very polished version, hopefully. Um, at this point, take like three or four. So. Uh, first things first, you want to create your skill. Um, I want to give you a little background on this skill. Uh, one of the main influencers for me on the importance of Alexa and voice in general has been this uh, entrepreneur, Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, motivational dude, uh, all that good stuff. Here's his Twitter handle. But I'm basically going to make a skill where you can ask Gary V to motivate you and then we'll take some audio clips from him and play them back and uh, yeah that's pretty much the gist of it so the skill is going to be called motivate me Gary V next so there's some pre-built models that Amazon has included um, flash briefing for news stuff like daily stuff like that smart home for uh, lights whatnot video we're going to do a custom skill um, this dashboard has some valuable resources how to build an Alexa skill they use Node.js though which is why I'm doing Python here I don't see a lot of Python tutorials um, and skill builder checklist so you gotta make sure you do all this before you test uh, alright so we'll start with the invocation name and I want people to say Ask Gary V to motivate me. So the invocation name is going to be Gary V. Um, there's probably other skills with the Gary V invocation name, but it doesn't have to be unique. And I think your skill name has to be unique, but not the invocation name. All right. So now that we've uh, created our invocation name. We need to add an intent um, because the point is to motivate you. We're going to make the motivate intent and we'll create that custom intent. And these sample utterances are what the user says in order to invoke the intent. Uh, similar to the way the invocation name is what the user says to invoke the uh, skill itself. So you'll say, Alexa, ask Gary V to motivate me. So we'll have to put motivate me as a sample utterance. Um, you want to think of other ways to say this so the user doesn't have to say the same thing every time and it works with uh, different different utterances. So we'll say motivate me and gas me up maybe. Ask Gary V to I like give me the sauce. Um, ask Gary V. Yeah, so we'll just use these for now, and we will save our model. All right. Um, so we're just gonna start with our Lambda code, our Python, and for that we'll go to our endpoint and we'll select AWS Lambda. ARN, and then you want to copy this uh, skill ID to your clipboard. And then at this point, you want to go to your aws.amazon.com and sign into the console. Create an account if you don't have one. And you want to launch Lambda. You can find it in the search bar or under compute here. Alright, so I gotta delete this. 
so we can remake it. And what you want going to want to do is create a function. Uh, is gonna, I'm just going to call it the same thing. Doesn't need to be called the same thing, but um, it simplifies it for me. So we're going to create it from scratch. A lot of tutorials I've seen use blueprints, but a lot of that code and the blueprint can get a little overwhelming, and I want to start from basic, basic scratch so you know uh, all the code and how it works. So the runtime, we're going to be using Python 3.6, but as you can see, uh, Lambda also supports all these other uh, languages. So we'll be doing Python 3.6, and as far as role is concerned, we'll just use an existing role and use Lambda basic execution create the function and now uh, the way a lambda function works is it waits for event triggers and then once an event trigger is detected it'll run the, the code send the response and then it'll stop running um, which is the whole serverless computing thing um, so we're going to be using Alexa skills kit as our trigger here and we're going to have to configure our trigger and for Alexa that just entails the skill ID verification. Um, basically, uh, the skill ID verification makes sure that the skill that's calling your Lambda function is your skill um, because if you disable this anybody can use your ARN and if they use that ARN they can uh, call your function and run up your processing time and whatnot. So just make sure you have this enabled and then like I said, um, copy the endpoint to your clipboard from your Alexa dashboard and paste that into your skill ID and then add it and this is your function. So now we can get focused on the actual code. Um, so this first function that the scratch or that the the lambda function will have by default is the lambda handler and whenever your Alexa skill calls your lambda function it will go to this lambda handler it's like the main function and if you use C or any other program that uses the main function um, so so we're going to delete all that stuff and then we are going to talk about how uh, Alexa will talk to your Lambda function. And in order to do that, we're going to look at the JSON reference. So look at JSON reference Alexa in Google. It'll be the first result. And it'll show you the format of the JSON messages that your Alexa will send to your Lambda function. So request format, we're going to look at request body syntax. and this is the JSON object that Alexa will send to your function. Um, it'll include version information, session information, all this good stuff. Uh, for now, we're just going to be looking at a request. And that's pretty much all we need for our request information right now. So in order to access that, we'll go to our Lambda function. And this event parameter here is this whole JSON object. And we want to find information about requests. So we're going to go to our, we want to find the request type. So we'll make a variable request type. And that's going to be event. And within event, it's the request key. And within the request itself, uh, we're going to be dealing with a launch event because we don't have any of our intents set up. So down here you see information about launch request and the type is launch request. So we want to find the type. So now we have our request type and based on the request type we can decide how our code is going to respond to Alexa. Uh, so for now we'll do an if statement if request type equals uh, launch request, right? 
then we'll want to execute the code or the function for handling the launch request. Otherwise, for now, we're just going to have it print in, in the console, not a launch request. All right, so now that we've talked about how Alexa will talk to your Lambda function, let's talk about how your Lambda function is going to talk to Alexa. Um, and it's very similar. You need to build a JSON re response that Alexa can then read and interpret what you want. So we're going to look at the response uh, Oh wait, we need to go back to our initial, initial uh, reference here. Alright, so in this request and response JSON reference we need to look at the response information, if I can spell. Alright, so uh, we want to look at the response body syntax. And as you can see, you can give it a lot of different information, version, session attributes, of which are like a custom list of attributes for your session. Pretty self explanatory, but uh, we'll get into that later. Right now, we're going to deal with response, which is what we want Alexa to say to our user. And we'll have it in the session because we don't have any more intents that we can implement at this point. So we need a function that will send this response to Alexa. So we need to define that function. So let's define a response builder. And that will build. A response and we're not gonna well we'll have one parameter which will be the text that you want to say to the user so response text all right and now we want to create our JSON object so we'll, we'll say response object uh, equals and now we can look at the reference here and see that we want to have a version. We'll use 1.0 because that's the current version. All right, in addition to the version, we want to include our response here. So we'll create another key called response. And then within that response, we have our output speech. So we need to make another object and have output speech. And as you can see, within output speech, you have the type and the text. Um, if you're just trying to have Alexa say something to the user, you just want to use plain text. So type me plain text. And our text is going to be whatever we passed in here. Um, so we're going to use response text. Um, and we don't need to use SSML right now, so that will do it for our response. And we need to put a comma to separate it from the should in session, which, as I said, will set to true because we don't have any other functionality. And that's our response. Uh, pretty simple response, but that's all we need for now, and then we'll return that response. So, um, now we just need to create the logic that decides what response to send depending on what request we get. So, if request type is launch request, we want to handle that launch request. Um, and right now, I'm going to just separate out our code to make it easier to read. These are going to be response builders. And then this is going to be our main handler. Now we need our request handlers. The first one we'll build is we want to 
we want to handle launch requests. So let's just make a function called handle launch request. Since it's a launch request, we don't really need to send it anything for now. So we'll define that handle launch request, no parameters. And we just want to build a response, right? Um, when they launch it, you just want to welcome welcome the user. So we'll say uh, return response builder and then the message. So welcome to motivate you. Jersey. So um, let's talk about the flow real quick. So when your skill calls the function, uh, it will go to this main handler. You'll find the request type with the JSON, and then if the request type is a launch request, it'll call handle launch request, which will return the response object uh, with welcome to motivate me Gary V, and it, it'll return, so we want to return that from the main handler back to our Alexa skill. So let's save this. And before we test it in Alexa, I want to test it in the Lambda function to make sure there's no syntax errors. So we'll go to test. Uh, we want to create a new text called um, launch test. And we'll use this template that Amazon has provided for starting a session. As you can see, it basically simulates the JSON that your Alexa will send you. Um, so it sends an, a new session with the quest type of launch request, just as we've handled in our function. All right, so now that we have our launch test set up, we can test our code within Lambda. And if we got a succeeded here, the first few times I recorded this tutorial, I did not get it succeeded. Um, but I was able to like iron out <laughs> most of the details. It's pretty simple code. So we got a success here, and we have our response JSON. And now let's see if that works with our Alexa skill. So first things first, we'll have to connect our Lambda function to our Alexa skill copying this ARN address, putting it in our, as our default region, and we will save our endpoints there. So now that we've incorporated our Lambda function into our skill using this uh, endpoint, we can save our endpoints, and we can, we gotta make sure to build our model before we can test it. So go back into your interaction model and hit build model and it'll start to build your skill. And then once it's finished building your skill, you can test it. All right, so as you can see, our build was successful. And we can go to the test tab here, uh, enable testing, and we'll say open Gary V. Welcome to motivate me Gary V. Perfect, so uh, we can see our JSON input that we got from our Alexa skill. And then we can see our output that we got from our Lambda function. Um, and as you can see, Alexa was able to interpret that and output the output speech. Thanks for watching the first part of the tutorial. Uh, we talked about how to set up your Alexa skill, how to set up your Lambda function, and we talked about the format of the JSON that is used to interact between the two. And next time, we are going to use the audio player feature of Alexa to actually get it to play some mp3 files um, to fulfill the intent 